Eminence, good morning and thank you for granting us this interview for LifeSite News this morning. On October 31st, we're going to commemorate 500 years of the Reformation. What is your first summary of these 500 years? We don't only celebrate 500 years of the beginning of the Reformation, but also 50 years of ecumenical dialogue between Lutherans and Catholics. And in this time, it was possible to discover what we have in common. This is the first instance. And then the second point is that the Reformation has not brought a renewal of the Church, but also the split, the division in the Church. And, in this, and after the division, the horrible uh, confessional war, or above all, the war of 30 years. And this is a very, very bad uh, event, and in this sense we must do repentance. And the third point is hope, that the common commemoration um, of the beginning of the Reformation will be a path for better unity between Lutherans and Catholics. The center of the Reformation and the origin of it is Martin Luther. For the Catholic Church, what of the theological insights of Luther can we take away? What other ones do we have to refute and distance ourselves from? Learn from Luther, I think, the best what we can say is what Pope Benedict has said in Erfurt, in, the, in his apostolic visit in Erfurt, where Luther has lived. And he said, the first um, thing what is important for Luther is the question of God, the centrality of the question of God, because Luther asked how I can have a merciful God. And Luther asked not only where is God and who is God, but he has a centrality of the revelation of God in Jesus Christ. As I think the centrality of the question of God and the Christocentric are the two main issues that you can learn from, from Luther. On the other side, we know that Luther doesn't want to make a division in the church, he doesn't make, um, uh, create new churches, he wants a renewal of the church. This was not possible in this time. And in this sense, we have an evolution of new churches and an other type of church. He is not the same as the Catholic understand on the church. Here we have a great difference. And in this sense, I have made the proposal for a future dialogue between Lutherans and Catholics to make a new common declaration about church, Eucharist and ministry. And I am very grateful to see that many regional dialogues um, speak about this issue. Above all, the regional dialogue in Finland and the regional dialogue in the United States they have just published a document with the title uh, Declaration on the Way, Church, Eucharist and Ministry. And it seems to me this is a very important path for deepening the dialogue between Lutherans and Catholics and to go on the way to the unity. Benedict XVI has always talked about a common witness of Catholics and Protestants in secular society. This is especially important in topics regarding life, the protection of life, the sanctity of life, and bioethical questions, also the question of the end of life and the issues connected. Do you think that this witness is important in modern society? Yes, it's very, very central because we have a new development in the ecumenical situa situation in the past. The leitmotiv in the ecumenical affairs was that Face divides and action unites. And today we must say a little the contrary because it was possible to deepen many questions in face, but we have new divisions, we have new tensions on ethical level, above all by bioethical uh, questions on the beginning and the end of the human life, and of the other side, marriage. Um, matrimony and sexuality, above all, on the leitmotiv of gender. And I think 
it is very important to deepen these ethical questions because when the different churches and ecclesial communities in Europe cannot speak with one voice about these very important questions, the voice of the Christianity becomes always very weaker. And in this sense, it's a great challenge and, uh, for the ecumenical situation to deepen this question and to find a better unity also in these ethical issues. On October 31st, Pope Francis will visit Lund, Sweden, to take part in the common and joint commemoration of the Reformation. What do you expect from him and what gestures do you expect to happen? The most important sign is the fact that Pope, Bened the Pope Francis goes to Sweden. It's the first time in the history that Catholics and Lutherans celebrate the commemoration of the Reformation together. In the past, these were confessional events with many triumphalistic and polemic uh, tones. Uh, today, we have the opportunity to share together this, uh, this event and Pope Francis and the President and the General Secretary of the Lutheran World Federation preside the liturgy together. This is the most important sign. And I don't know. We have many surprises by Pope Francis and I cannot tell about surprises. Are you afraid of any unexpected gestures? No, no, no. I think this, is, this event is very good prepared and we have also a common declaration between the Pope and the Bishop Yunnan and I think in this common declaration the most important things are said. The Catholic Church has been in dialogue with the Protestants what elements of unity are present and can intercommunion be one of them? The main theme of this, this uh, ecumenical event in Malmö is from conflict to communion. We have many conflicts in the past, with the conflicts and the division in the church, and the goal, the aim of our way is communion. But we are on the way to communion, we have not a full communion. And we cannot expect from this ecumenical event in Lund to have the, the goal of the ecumenical situation. And you know, intercommunion is for us Catholic the aim, the goal of the way, and not a part of the way. And in this sense, intercommunion cannot be part of this ecumenical event in Lund. Patriarch Bartholomew I recently celebrated 25 years of his ordination. Um, Pope Emeritus Benedict sent him a letter. Uh, did you send him a letter as well? And what are the prospects for the dialogue with the Orthodox Church? Yes, I sent also a letter from felicitation and gratulation for his anniversary of his 25 years of pontificate. And we have very beautiful relations, reports between the Church of Rome and the Church of Constantinople and uh, the Patriarch, His Hol All Holiness, is a very good guide in the ecumenical relations. Because you know, we have today in the Orthodoxy many different tendencies. We have a tendency a very openness for ecumenical affairs, above all by the Patriarch. And on the other side, we have many, many opposition uh, against the ecumenical uh, affairs. And in this sense, it is very important to deepen all the relations between the Church of Rome and the Church of Constantinople. And I'm very grateful to visit Constantinople on the end of November, by the 30 um, November, the Feast of St. Andrew, the patron of the Church in Constantinople. And in the name, on behalf of the Holy Father, I go to Constantinople to celebrate with this Church the Patron Feast.